Cripps. Cripps inside 50. This is good. Kennedy. Big start. This would be for the Blues. Kennedy. Oh, yeah. Right through the middle. Just this composure there from Cripps as he's getting tackled. Was just able to sit it out in front of Kennedy. And no mistake there from Kennedy. Beautiful kick at goal. Just got into the vision of the kicker. With that, Paul Sebastiani, we're yes. going to start talking about Matt Kennedy. Uh, yeah. You did mention him as the one of the potential forgotten men. So yes. how are you thinking about him leading into 2024? Yeah, well, he had the knee injury in uh, 2023, which curtailed his which curtailed his season, unfortunately. He was, and I don't know what people in the chat think, but I actually thought he was really building into something strong to the back end of, of 2023. He was actually having a really good game against Fremantle, if you remember. And then he... Um, and then he obviously hurt his knee, and then he came back in that final against Melbourne. He was clearly, was clearly underdone. And and look, what he provided for us in the second half against Melbourne, you could see what he was trying to do. He was trying to lock down there. Uh, he was trying to lock down May and Lever, which you know Le- Lever had a field day in the first you know first little bit of that match. But uh, I think George Hewitt, as a midfielder from a defensive point of view, is better than him. But I do think that Matt Kennedy is a He's got a few more tricks up his sleeve than what George Hewitt does. So mm. Kennedy can move forward. He can kick goals. He's known for that in his midfield role, whereas George Hewitt isn't. So I think from an attacking point of view, we get a bit more out of Matt Kennedy. But from a defensive point of view, I think we get a bit more out of George Hewitt. And it would just depend on what the coaches want and how they want to set up in particular games. So I would say he's probably now... From a midfield perspective, he's probably in the bottom rung with all due respect. And when I say bottom rung, I don't mean he's not going to play or he's not going to be selected or anything like that. I just think that based off what we've got in the midfield now, he's not going to be an absolute walk-up start uh, based on what I think he's done in the last few seasons because we just need to get better in every facet on the ground. And I think the evolution of us in that is blokes... uh, you know, succeeding him in those particular roles. So, but again, that doesn't mean he's not going to play 15 games this year. We just don't know. Mm. So that is there a role for him in the team and in the squad for 2024? Absolutely there is. Absolutely there is. Like like there will be for everybody. So uh I wouldn't I wouldn't rest on him, put it that way. Um he's a competitive bugger and um I look I like what he brings. Players like that you need. Players like that you need because you know they're going to set a standard with regards to physicality and the contest and they're not going to shirk the task so look i really like him i've always really liked him um how many games he plays next season i've got no idea i've got absolutely no idea Hmm. so he's played he's a he's a a great case study so yeah he's played uh 16 games in 2023 Mm -hmm. uh where are we here 94 games in total right it's been a bit of a journey with him, let's As, be honest. Yeah. Um, came to the club from the Giants, spent a few years. I, I still remember doing these previews in, you know, 19, 18, 19, 20, 21. And the, com- the the common feel about him was that he just didn't have the pace to be in the midfield. And yeah. we knew we had the strength and he just hadn't put it together. I think we can all agree that 2022 is the year where we started seeing him mm. just get comfortable at the level play a bit more consistently. And he really showed us something. He really put it all together. Yeah. 23, as you said, 16 games, uh, a bit patchy in the sense of got in, got hurt a couple of times and yeah. probably just at the wrong time of the year at the pointy end. But I don't know, when I look at him now, especially with Michael Voss as the coach, I look at Kennedy mm-hmm. as a Michael Voss type player because yeah. he's, you know, what is Voss here all about? It's all about what you what you do at the contest. So he's got, yeah. there's no issue with Matt Kennedy at the contest. Nope. Nope. I also feel like there's a common theme that, you know, I saw a comment here as well. Like, you know, you can either play Hewitt or you can play Kennedy. You can't play both. Yeah. There may be merit to that. I yeah. believe that if we are going all in on our strengths, that is our contested game, mm. there is space for both of them. Uh, do you see it that way, or do you think we have to evolve the midfield and not have, you know, Cripps, Hewitt, and Kennedy? Yeah, well, it, again, it, it just depends on what the coaches want. So I think there there is – look, I don't – in my heart of hearts, I don't believe in a best 22. I don't know what that means. 
Mm. The best 22 is different for everybody. To me, it's a squad of 44, 46 players, right? And whatever is going to win the game on the day and be sustainable long-term is what you need to implement week to week, right? If Kennedy and Hewitt are part of that, so be it. There are going to be games where we say, okay, well, you know, the opposition's foot speed might get us, but at the contest, we feel we have a physical edge if we play Kennedy and Hewitt. So we want to get the ball first and we don't want them to be the guys providing the spread, which they're not. We want them to be the guys digging in and under and getting the ball out to guys like, you know, our wingers, Cottrell and Akers and 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 our prime ball movers like Walsh and Chera. So for me, I think that there's room for those two players if we do need it, but it's all dependent on opposition and what the coaches want. So again, what's history said? History said in the last two seasons, Matt Kennedy is an important part of this squad. Will that change? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't see anyone... I don't see anyone in that midfield absolutely flying past him to keep him out and keep him in the reserves for, you know, 80% of the season. I don't see that happening. And look, touch wood, I hope they don't happen, but injuries do happen. So he's probably going to have to, he's probably going to have to come into this team at some stage. He might even hold his spot. I don't know. I don't Mm. know. No, it's a good point. It's a good point. Um, Matt's mentioned it here as well. Maybe, maybe, this is now an error for us where there is no such thing as the best 22. Yeah, I, I don't best, believe it, mate. I don't believe it. It's the best it. 30. It's, it's the best yeah. 30. Uh, or it's the best squad. That's the truth. Well, what's the best 22? What is it based on talent? Is it based on the best tactical and the best strengths in the team that are going to take you to beat an opposition in that week? That might not be the next week. So then that changes. It's changing every year, mate. Form dips. One thing I will say about Matt Kennedy, and I don't know if you have an answer for this too, but has he ever in his career at Carlton, outside of injury, have you ever said this about Matt Kennedy? God, he played an absolute stinker today. There's no way he should be in the team next week. I've never said that about him. No. Which is I've always you know, wanted more, maybe. I've, yeah. I've maybe you know, I would like yeah. to see him get a bit more fit, cover the ground yeah. more, get to more contests, but He's always brought the hard edge, always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what you need. So the, one, one thing, the only thing that's really curtailed him has been injury. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, you said it with regards to when he first came to the club, when you did previews on him early, you know, he did his ankle the first game he played for us. And then throughout then, it's just been a constant battle with injury. And now seems to have got his body right. And, you know, the knee injury last season was just, it's just unlucky, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, for me, form has never been game. Well, yeah, well, exact form has never been a major issue for him, which is you know, it's testament to his consistency and his work rate. Mm. I think if we talk about our midfielders who can go forward, yeah, that's where I think he has the point of difference. You did touch on it just earlier when you said he's got a little bit more than what Hewitt does. Defensively, yeah, Hewitt yeah. probably one of the better midfielders that we have Agreed. defensively. Agreed. But yeah. Kennedy's marking ability oh, is yeah. is a factor. It's 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 yeah. a certain factor. He yeah. and I think he can yeah. certainly average something like four and a half to five marks a game. Um yeah. if right. we can get some of those marks, if it's a 25% of the game, mm. you know, in the forward line, then I think mm. his versatility becomes a strength. And yeah, it's huge, man. one thing I know about this team, yeah. how it's evolved is that if you're hard at the contest, and you're versatile, that you're, in. you're going to play regular football. Bloody oath. Bloody oath. That's, that's the case for the best sport teams as well. So, you know, this, you like you said it, when do we say it? We said it on the Monday show. You, you, you've got to be unpredictable up to a certain point because if the opposition can pick exactly what you're going to do, well, then they'll, then they'll be able to stop it. So, um, yeah, like I said, he's got a beautiful set shot on him as well. Very, very reliable. He kicked that beautiful goal in the... Uh, in the semi-final from, you know, sort of nearly 50 out on that tight angle. Um, so, you know, pl- plays like him are important. It's, it's not a matter of, oh, he's a lock for best 22 or anything like that. Players like him are important to your squad. Mm. Simple as that. Game day, training, um, you know. Standards, mate. Standards. Correct. So if you talk about him potentially as a hybrid, I mean, his mm. greatest goal tally in a season was 2019 with us where he played 10 games, kicked 11 goals, uh, kicked yep. the five goals in 2023 from 16 games. Yep. I mean, I'm not really expecting 15, 20 goals, yeah. but I think he's capable of 10. 
10 in a season. I think so, yeah. I think so as well, yeah. Half, half a goal a game, something like that. Yeah. You know, that he'll just be on the scoreboard tried. this season. Yeah. yeah, well, that that him, his ability to mark the ball, yep. and he's, he's got a nice set shot, as you mentioned. Yep. All of that coming together in 2024, for 100%. me, looks like more game time for him. I agree. Yeah, I completely agree. It, look, like I said, the only thing that's kept him out of the team, really, when you think about it, is injury. Mm. Like I said, his form has never... I don't think his form has ever been questioned. His form has never been a player where we've gone, oh, yeah, he's definitely getting three brown low votes today. He was the clear best on ground. He's always been what is he's always been that six out of ten player, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. He's always been that. And you need guys like that. You need guys like that. Hmm. And the other the other thing we'll we'll end on with him is he's in a nice spot in his career when it comes to age Perfect. and experience. So he's Perfect. born on the sixth of April, nineteen ninety seven. So he'll be well, he's twenty six right now. He'll be twenty seven uh, you know, in April. Mm. Uh, played 94 games. So 27 years old, 94 games. Really, you know, he's been in the system quite a while now. So he's had quite yep. a few quite a few cracks at a preseason to know what to do, what's good for his body, what's not. And the optimist in me says it's a perfect storm for Matt Kennedy. 96 games. He'll definitely play his 100th this year. I'm just, yeah. trying, to, I'm just trying to think if he'll... Will he play, will he play early? I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Well, you you did mention it. He's it's not a criticism that he's in the lower rung of midfielders, but he the the midfield's so deep. The midfield's got yeah. four or five guys who I think yeah. are at a level where they have to play. Yeah, yeah. And well, he that's probably just, in that yeah. next level. Yeah, level. That, that's just yeah. It's purely based off talent. So you know you've got you know you got Chera, Cripps, Walsh. Um, who's in after that? Probably Doc. It's probably in there now as well. Uh, Hewitt, uh, Kennedy, and then who else is there after that? Am I missing? I'm sure I'm missing someone. <laughs> Cripps, Chera, Dow. Walsh. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a rotation of about six to seven in there, and, you know, he's probably in the bottom rung, but it doesn't, doesn't mean he's not going to be an important part of the squad. It doesn't mean no. anything. Hmm. Well, that's Matt Kennedy. We'll yep. turn it over to those of you watching at home. Let us know yep. in the comments. What do you think about Matt Kennedy moving into 2024?